Okay, in this tutorial, um, I want to show you how to create a flighted conveyor. There's two ways of doing this. Uh, the first way, you can just import it directly from a library and it's already done. And then all you have to do is configure it by telling it um, what pitch you want and uh, how many pitches you want. Um, but the second way is to actually start from scratch. And it's probably a good idea that uh, if you want to develop your skills at Mac Designer, you learn how to do this kind of thing. Uh, so we need a mechanism on which to put the uh, conveyor. So I'll create a mechanism first. Uh, I know I've got a mechanism because I've got this green rectangle, which is the frame of that uh, of this particular mechanism. Um, now we need to add some geometry. Uh, the first geometry we need to add is to uh, give the path which the conveyor is going to follow. Most conveyors a simple conveyor is uh, a racetrack. Um, so we'll start by just drawing a, a racetrack. So two arcs. Um, one there. One there. And I'll ca connect this with um, two straight lines to make the racetrack complete. And then we can add some constraints. Um, which I'll start with a horizontal. We'll make this uh, make this racetrack horizontal, <clears throat> and then I need to make uh, the joints between the arc and the lines tangent. So those start with tangent there, tangent there, tangent there, and uh, tangent there. And then um, because we're going to add pulleys here, uh, we need to control the dimension, the size of the pulley. Uh, so this dimension here will determine that size and similarly this will determine the size of the pulley at the other end. So this will be the drive pulley at this end and then at this end we'll have the driven pulley. So uh, <coughs> oh, we need some lines as well, grounded lines, because we're going to attach rockers uh, to the center points here. I'll make these two lines horizontal, so these need to be we need to add um, rockers uh, off these lines here. Uh, so I can come out of the uh, part editor now, and now we can add our parts that are going to carry the pulleys. So oop, I've got that wrong. I'll just hit Control Z there. Um, <coughs> and then I can add the joint explicitly. So it's added a pin joint there. Um, and then I'll add another part at this center here, which will be the part that's going to carry the driven pulley. <coughs> because this is a drive pulley, <coughs> I'll put a, um, a motion dimension onto this to make it into a rocker or a crank, really. Uh, so click the joint, click a grounded line, and then click the line on the part that we want to drive, and hit return. Okay, and there's our motion dimension. Um, and then I need a simple machine clock to drive the motion dimension, but I'm going to go through a gearbox um, <coughs> because we have to because we have to control the number of revolutions that this pulley is going to do, to do um, in one machine cycle. And the reason we, uh, well, the next thing I have to do is add a motion path. So I'll add a motion path uh, to this circuit, racetrack. Um, yeah, so this, if we look at this, uh, oh, no, I haven't quite finished. I've got to add a, yeah, the next thing we can do is add a pulley, a, the drive pulley itself. I think we've got enough information to do that. So we can hit the pulley here, hit the joint, uh, the center, the motion path, the dimension that is going to control the size of the pulley, and the part the pulley is going to be attached to. So that draws our pulley in there. So now if we uh, cycle this, we'll see that there's a point on the path that is uh, rotating along the path, and it's effectively being driven by this pulley. What we have to do is to arrange for that point to travel all the way around the circuit of the uh, racetrack uh, once every time um, the machine clock uh, goes through 360 degrees. So at the moment um, <clears throat> this crank rotates every 360 degrees of the machine clock. So if we change the gearing here we can uh, we can make sure that this happens. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is to figure out what that gearing should be. Well, to do that, we need to know how long our belt needs to be. Uh, and to do that, we need to control the length of the belt. Um, now we can set this up through the motion path. Um, 
I can't remember whether I added a dimension. Let's just check. I don't think I did. Yeah, so I need a dimension uh, between the two centers because this is the dimension that I'm going to use to control the length of the belt. Let's put that uh, up there. So there's our dimension that we're going to use to control the length of the belt with. Uh, I can come out of this. Uh, now, if I go into the motion path, there's a tab here which says length control. So we've got a, um, we want a, a belt pitch at the moment five. Well, let's make the belt pitch uh, ten. Uh, you'll see it updates the pulley size accordingly, um, and we'll have. Let's say we're going to have, if we've got 10, let's say we're going to make the, the, the target length of the belt. We'll make it, uh, well, the first thing we'll make it, we, we can control this target length of the belt, but we need a dimension to drive in order to achieve the correct length. So the, I can do that by doing start length control, and then I can select a dimension here. So this is the dimension that is going to drive the, the, these two centers so that the belt length is correct. And then I can put in here, and I'll put a target length of, I don't know, 600. Obviously, there has to be some multiple of 10 uh, to ensure that we have an integer number of, of teeth. I hit return and it adjusts the belt length accordingly to pretty closely anyway. Um, so now we're in a situation where we have uh, 600, a, a belt length of 600. Um, and we have, I can't, I don't know how many teeth we've got on the pulley. So let's have a look. I'll just have a look at that. Let's make this a nice round number. Let's make that 20. So we've got 20 teeth, and I'll make sure, that I'll, to make this hot exercise a little bit easier, I'll make this pulley the same size. So let's do that, let's get the pulley, uh, let's add a pulley, the, 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 the driven pulley at this end. So again, we select the joint of the pulley, the motion path that is going to drive the pulley, and the dimension that is going to control the size of the pulley, and the part to which the pulley will be attached. Uh, and we'll arrange this to have the same number of teeth as the other pulley. So we'll give that 20. Um, and then we'll, we can check. Uh, let's have a look and see if the length control is still correct. No, it's moved. So I have to just, I'll just, uh, uh, I think I can just make this 601, 600. I just, or just have to jiggle it to get it to calculate and go to the correct length. Uh, so now we've got a, a belt length of 600. We've got two pulleys. We've got a pulley, uh, a drive pulley here of uh, with 20 teeth. And the belt pitch is 10. So that's 200. So that the circumference of this pulley is 200 uh, millimeters. And the belt uh, is 600 millimeters. So I think a gear ratio of, if we go down here and we'll just have a gear as a ratio, and we'll, the input pulley is going to be 600 and uh, the output pulley which will be the number of teeth of this uh, will be 200 so that gives us a gear ratio of 3 so in other words three circumferences of this pulley uh, will equal the entire path length of the, the belt I think <laughs> so now we can run this and check that that's correct so the, the point starts here and run it round and we've got to nearly 360 bang and yeah we can see it's about i think that's correct now so 360 it goes around one complete revolution so we've got we've now got a, a, a system with a driven pulley sorry a drive pulley controlled by a motion dimension through a gearbox and a driven pulley so now we can uh, add the flights to our conveyor and then use the patent uh, patent function to um, duplicate those flights. Um, <clears throat> so to add the flights we need to add some parts to the racetrack or to these to the points that are on the motion path. Um, now we've only got one point at the moment uh, and really we need two quite close together I think for a flight. Um, for reasons you'll see in a minute. So uh, if we click on the motion path here and go to the point parameters tab, at the moment as it says here we've got the one motion point. Uh, I think we need two at a minimum. <coughs> uh, now that I've added two, and if I do gener uh, regenerate motion points here, you'll see that they're basically located at 180 degrees to one another. Uh, but we want them very close together. 
um, because we need a part, or we're going to have to add um, a couple of parts linking those two points, onto which we're going to mount our flight. So uh, I'll get this a range of, or a linear range of five millimeters. And uh, now we can see the two points are very, very close together, separated in fact by five millimeters. So uh, I'll go, we can now add our, uh, a, a, a dyad effectively, which will be sort of like just a point on the belt that we can anchor uh, a flight to. So I'll add a, a part to that point, and then I can add a, a point, uh, a part to that point, and also link to this line on this part here, and then that creates um, a dyad. And I can show you the dyad it is. If you go to the kinem kinematics tab over here, um, uh, then we'll see we've got a pulley rocker, a rocker, and yeah, an RPR dyad, which has been added between those two points. So what's that going to do? Well, it's just going to rotate around with the belt. No problem. And the reason why we need a, um, a link, uh, sorry, a dyad like that, is because as you go around an arc, as you can imagine, the two points, the two, the distance between the two points will change. So if we just added a part, well, we couldn't add a part. It's not physically possible in Mac Designer. Um, but the dist because the distance uh, between the two points changes as it goes around the arc, then we have to have some kind of dyad that can allow that to happen. Uh, so now we just can add our flight. I'll just add a, you know, just a bit of geometry just to add our flight. We'll add it to this point here. Uh, so what we're going to have, we'll just have a, a line, a rectangle really. So I'll add a rectangle. Um, can make these two vertical and um, give it a dimension, give it a height, I don't know, 10 millimeters, say. Oh, not good. Uh, I'll make these um, horizontal and not horizontal. And we'll give it a width of, um, if I right click here, I can add a dimension. Give it a width of, um, well, I guess, uh, one millimeter should do it. <coughs> Okay, and we'll anchor the, we'll, we'll put it on the origin, so I'll just put a, of the, of the part um, here, I'll just put that there, anchor that to that. Okay, so there's our flight, or the outline of our flight. Um, there it is. Uh, and now I can put a profile on this, um, and also uh, add a profile, and this will turn that into a solid. Now I'm in a position to pattern uh, that uh, so I don't have to do I, the last thing I want to do is to draw all the flights on the belt that would be an extremely tedious thing to do uh, so we can use the pattern function now uh, to create all our flights we know I think I said there was 600 well the question arises is how many flights we want um, well let's say we've got six we've got a belt length of 600 so if we say we want 30 millimeter pitch between the flights that's 20 20 flights say for example, so um, I'll add a pattern function block now. So if we go to the function block up here, we go and we can set the pattern, which is these four dots. Uh, and we can set this up. So click on that. And here's the editor for the pattern by double clicking on it. Uh, the first thing to do is enable it. We don't want a space pattern. That's like an ordinary CAD pattern. Um, we want a phase pattern because uh, what we want, the way the phase pattern, the way the patterning system works is that every machine angle. So if you start, if we've set the clock at um, machine clock here at zero, say uh, every machine angle, it uh, it calculates um, the position of the mechanism at various phases and. Uh, from that, it can determine the position of various objects. Um, so I can illustrate this by by this flight, for example. So, um, for example, if we just did a, if we used a space pattern here, um, then we could have a circle, or we could have a rectangular pattern, or something. But th that's not what this is. This is this, 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 the, the, the the motion of the, the belt is not a simple geometric pattern. We have to take into consideration the phase uh, of the mechanism because the phase determines the orientation of the the flight. 
and the position of the flag. So uh, we can set this up. First off, we have to select um, the solid. It, 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 it only generally the patterning works with solids. So um, if I turn solids on uh, or model solids on, which is this button here, then I can select that. Um, I have to sorry. I have to first off I have to tell the pattern that I want to pattern that particular element. So I unlock that, um, and then I can select this, and hopefully, yeah, in it goes. Okay, so it knows I'm going to pattern the extrusion or the uh, part or the element called extrusion. I've got a phase pattern set up here, so I can lock this again. I don't want anything else to be patterned, um, and then I can go here and I can say how many copies I want. Uh, well, what did I say? Twenty. 20 copies and the final angle to be 360 so it's going to work over the full phase the the angle here refers to the machine clock angle the range so that's saying that over the mach entire machine clock angle there are going to be 20 20 copies and each copy will be um, uh, will be calculated at the at the corresponding phase which in this case if there's 20 copies are they going to be 18 degrees apart yeah, I think 18. So each copy will be made 18 degrees apart, and so these should be equispaced around the around the belt. Okay, so if I cycle that, look at what happens? That's not worked out so well. What's going on? Okay, so we can have a look. Uh, let's try rebuilding it. Um, okay, all right, there we go. And I had to rebuild it. And when I run it, I see I've got my 20 equispaced. Uh, flights to my belt and that is how you create a conveyor belt with flights um, there is an easier way of doing it uh, you don't have to go through this entire procedure um, if we create another mechanism go here put this um, put the mechanism here uh, okay so there's another mechanism here and I'll turn the these off. I can just go to the library feature and I can just add a flighted belt uh, load and we should get a flighted belt okay and if I turn the pattern on all right let's just rebuild that run it oh yeah I need the solids don't I so I have to turn the solids on okay and there's um, a flighted belt and you can see the other one running in the background as well so that's the easy way of doing it and then you can configure with the library feature you can configure the size and the number of flights etc uh, by editing the um, parameters in the design sets okay so that is um, all I'm going to say about how to create flighted conveyors um, they're very useful and appear in most machines um, so they're really uh, very important to make sure that you know how to uh, create them and uh, use them.